Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be sharing my full review of the all new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra after using it for a bit over a week. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, first things first, less is more. And it seems like with this new iteration of the S line by Samsung, the company has figured out a way to make subtle changes in the way where you get a major impact. Now, the three to four main changes that I will be sticking to in this video are going to include the design, very subtle changes there, but making a big difference in terms of design. But looking at it first glance, you probably will be thinking, well, this looks just like the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And you'd be right, right? Because the design seems to mimic just that. But as you take a closer look, you will notice that those individual lenses on the back of the S23 Ultra are slightly larger, slightly thicker, right? And of course, as I mentioned earlier, you have a larger sensor there, but we'll get to that in a moment. When you look at the front face of the phone here, you will notice that the display is not as curved as what you had on the S22 Ultra. I'm pretty sure you've heard that from a whole range of people by now, but it does have a major impact because it gives the phone even more character, right? So a flatter display, so you get a boxier phone that digs deeper into your hand. So it makes it easy for you to be able to handle your phone and you can easily hold onto your phone as opposed to when it is curved. Now, personally, I am one of those curved display type of people, but I still like this. I actually like this very much because it gets to satisfy both those who prefer flat displays and those like myself who prefer curved display. So you have that going in terms of, you know, design changes on the hardware here. There are also other subtle changes that make it or that do not make for a drastic or a huge impression at first glance. The speaker, for example, I find it to be louder than what you had on the S22 Ultra and apparently it's been modified slightly. The display also, you know, you are probably going to hear a lot of people say, well, it's the same display as last year, which is true and also not fully true, right? So there's a little bit going on there. 1440 by 3088 in terms of pixels. So Quad HD Plus, of course, it does stand here at 6.8 inches. And of course it is a dynamic AMOLED display, right? It does support 120 Hertz refresh rate. Of course, starting at one, so from one, all the way to 120 hertz refresh rate. You do have HDR10 plus support here, along with Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on here. Plus, in terms of brightness, this guy can go up to 1750, but you know, something that we've seen before. So it is an extremely bright phone, you know, when dealing with direct sunlight on everything, you have no issues with that. I've had zero issues playing with this phone outside under direct sunlight. Now, one thing that not a lot of people seem to mention here is that even though they are the same on paper, there are some slight changes here that go as far as even affecting the battery life. The hardware, when it comes down to that display, is actually made with something slightly different that makes it so that it draws even less power from the battery, making the phone overall even more power efficient. Now, we're not gonna dive into those details, but just know that the display on the S23 Ultra also plays a role in terms of saving you battery. Now let's go ahead and hop on to the next big thing here, which is of course the camera. As I mentioned earlier, it mimics just that same setup you had on the S22 Ultra, right? So those three individual cameras there, but you have that 200 megapixel wide or the 200 megapixel main camera here. Then you have a 10 megapixel telephoto, and then you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide. Now I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but just know that the camera on here is so amazing, right? Especially when shooting objects that are, you know, very, far away if you are at a game or something like that and you're zooming in you can actually zoom really far and still be able to use that picture because if you've tried it with other cameras or other phones the further out the object is the less likely you are going to be able to use the picture but with this it is so impressive to see that even certain things that are to a certain distance you still are able to zoom in and be able to use the picture also another thing that was so impressive has been the video stabilization. It's been very, very impressive here. Pretty much in line with what you have with something like the iPhone 14 Pro Max, right? You know, that stabilization is so good while the video quality is also just as good. Now, another thing that I've noticed is that even in low light settings, this actually performs better than the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. So this is definitely an upgrade in terms of camera. Now let's go ahead and loop back here really quick with the front facing camera, the selfie camera. Now, I'm not a big selfie type of person myself. In my own testings, this has been been 
so good. And I'm talking well lit settings and also, you know, low light settings. It performs pretty well. Now, the front facing camera here, you have to keep in mind, it used to be 50 megapixel, what you had on the S22 Ultra, but here is downgraded to 12 megapixel. But it performs, in my humble opinion, pretty much at the same level as the 50 megapixel that you do find on the S22 Ultra. Now, doing a quick summary here on the display and also on the camera before we move on to the next big change here, the display still looks amazing. Inky blacks, inky reds, you know, picture quality, very, very sharp, of course, because it's very dense, high PPI on here. So of course it is expected to see really, really sharp picture quality, vibrant colors. It is extremely smooth. And as I mentioned earlier, it does support one all the way up to 120 hertz refresh rate. So slightly different LTPO display here, as I mentioned, compared to that of last year, but it does have a subtle impact on battery and your user experience. And that is all of that. So playing video games here has been excellent. So watching movies and entertainment here has been just fantastic. Now summarizing the camera here, also picture quality, of course, very good. As I mentioned, image stabilization when it comes out to video, really, really good. I think this is pretty much the top dog now when it comes down to overall camera. The next thing is gonna be what changes took place on the inside, what main change took place on the inside. And of course, that's gonna be the platform, right? Right now, you, what you have here is Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, right? So this chipset is made to essentially optimize this phone or make this phone to be as good as possible. And one of the biggest benefits from that chipset is the fact that you have fantastic battery life here. I've come extremely close to eight hours SOT. And it seems like everyone is so impressed by the battery life here. Even when it was still learning my using habits, it is just insane. And as I mentioned, there's a whole lot of things that go into making sure that your battery life is optimized. And the chipset plays a major role in that. Taking pictures and videos and all that good stuff, or even charging. It just does not get warm. And that is thanks to a new cooling system that was installed here, along with you know, a chipset that knows how to manage this specific phone. Now, my unit here is 12 gigs of RAM along with 512 gigs of internal storage, right? And we're talking faster RAM and faster storage when compared to the previous iteration. So those, again, if you notice, throughout this video, the theme has been very subtle changes here and there that overall make for a better user experience. So again, faster storage, faster RAM, you know, slightly louder speakers, better camera. So performance here has been top notch. I'm not gonna go into details because it'd be just redundant. It's the best you can get on the phone right now. And it's optimized to work extremely well with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra that we have here. So where are we playing games? We're talking games. You can play any game you want on this phone where you're playing game, multitasking, whatever it is that you're doing here, it's gonna be silky smooth as you are working through that. We also do have a stylus. Now, nothing that we haven't seen with the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra in terms of features, right? So you still have access to all of those same features along with the remote features. My only thing with the S Pen here is that I don't get to use it as much as a lot of people do. Personally, I always walk around with a tablet. I always have a tablet. If you've been watching the channel for a while, then you know that I constantly walk around with a tablet. But when it comes out to signing documents, doing little things here and there, or maybe even using this as a shutter, I can go ahead and do that. But it's not as comfortable as a regular stylus. So that's why I tend to always use that instead. But again, I do know some people who find this to be highly, highly useful and they need it on their phone at all times. The battery is actually the same size as what we had on the S22 Ultra. Again, still used more efficiently on here than what you had on the S22 Ultra. 5,000 milliamp, right? Fast charge capable at up to 45 watt. Also reverse wireless charge. You know, you can, obviously you can wireless charge the phone, but you can also do a reverse wireless charge. Now this video is getting too long, so let me go ahead and cut to the chase here. Should you go ahead and buy this phone? If you own the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, I still stand with my original decision that you should just hold on to it. Unless of course you want to. Obviously, you know, feel free to go ahead and do so. Or if you prefer flat displays and you want to experience what, you know, these slight changes are like, then feel free to go ahead and hop on this one. Also, if you were a big fan of the Note series like I was, and you own an S22 Ultra, if you can, I would say, give this a try because this offers more of a Note feel. So it does take me back to the days of the Samsung Galaxy Note. Now, if you're coming from a couple of generations behind and you're asking, should you upgrade to this, it will be a 
absolute yes. Absolutely, you should go ahead and upgrade to this phone here. I'm gonna have a link or two in the description if you wanna go ahead and check it out and see what off, what deals Samsung is offering on this phone here. What questions do you have? What other things would you like for me to test on this phone here? Let me know in the comment section. I'm gonna catch you in that comment section like I always do. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do me a favor and hit both the like and the subscribe button. Share this video if you know anyone who is in the market or who's considering the S23 Ultra. I'm also gonna catch you in the next video. Up until that next video, of course, as always, stay safe out there.